Well, yes, certainly very, very lucky that we are enabled to show you creatures that occur throughout Africa, both on Juma and the Mara, but certainly the populations thereof differ greatly. Ooh, looks like it's heading towards... I don't know what's in the ground there. Some smaller birds that seem to be a little bit worked up, but let's just trod straight past them. I'm not sure if it was a Franklin or a kind of a lapwing. What is that in there? It looks like a wattled lapwing, possibly. Yeah, it looks like it. Or a crowned lapwing. And maybe it's got its nest in there, but wasn't too concerned that the ostrich waltzed on past. Beautiful, beautiful scenes as it cruises through the open plains. This is a male. Similar colors to the fish eagle you've just seen, but like Byron says, this bird certainly cannot fly. And I'm very happy that you did get to see the fish eagle also calling. I love the way they droop their head when they call in flight. This guy's taking a moment to catch its breath and cool off, it looks like, having its mouth open there. They pant like dogs do when they heat up, as do all birds, as they cannot sweat to cool off like us. Hello, Bobby. You'd like to know if I've ever come across an ostrich's nest, and sadly, no, I have not. And only on a few... So, uh, occasions have I actually seen ostrich chicks. They are the cutest little things on the planet. Huge clunky legs and very cryptically colored bodies, which helps them blend in if and when there are any threats. But no, I have not seen an ostrich nest. They're incredible things. And interestingly, multiple females can lay their eggs in, in one nest, but only one male Will, attend, will assist in the incubation thereof, and also usually only the main females. So beta females will be allowed to lay their eggs within the nest, but they won't really be involved too much in the incubation. And interestingly, the female, the alpha female, who is in charge of the nest, will push the beta female's eggs out to the outskirts and have her eggs right in the middle. So quite an interesting setup, and they've got multiple, like I said, females possibly laying in one nest. And they can be anywhere between 20 and 30 eggs, but again, a lot depends on where in Africa you are viewing them. And you also do get a subspecies of ostrich. You get the southern ostrich, or the common ostrich, like this one over here, which has got a very pink neck and legs. And then you also, not far north from here, start getting the Somali ostrich, which has got a very bluish colored neck and legs. So you do get two subspecies. I was lucky enough to see the Somali ostriches up in an area called Samburu, where I was working before I came back to Safari Live here in the Mara. Paula, you would like to know if ostriches migrate? And no, they don't, not as far as I'm aware. The only main animals that migrate at least in this migration, are the wildebeest, of course. They are the most numerous. Then the zebra, then the Thompson's gazelle. Those are the three main species that are doing large movements or migrating. The rest of them will just be doing kind of seasonal movements, short movements, as in when there's food or mating, but it all depends, again, on the individual species. Hello, Penny. Just six years old. You would like to know why do ostriches have such long necks? And I guess it's because they've got such long legs. And if they didn't have long necks, it would be very, very difficult for them to feed. Like you can see it feeding now. It can now reach the floor. But if it had a short neck, it would be very difficult for it to be able to get to its food. So then the next question that we need to ask ourselves is why do they have very long legs? And that's so that they can run quickly because they cannot fly. So these long legs allow them to move very, very quickly and avoid being eaten by lion, leopard, and cheetah. Well, at least it helps them to avoid being eaten, but they will be attacked by most often lion when they're fully grown. It's when they're youngsters that they are 
very, very vulnerable to other predators like snakes and jackals, even the smaller cats like serval and caracal. But once they're fully grown, they don't have too much to worry about, like I say, other than lions, and they can run very, very quickly. It's actually hilarious when they run. They wave that long neck from side to side and put their wings up and out from side to side. They have got a very, very unique way of running. Not always. They sometimes just run normally with their heads up, but they also do have a kind of a display that they do when they run, maybe when guys like this are trying to impress the ladies. Beautiful. Okay, well, it sounds like Byron does not want to leave that crocodile until it shows him his first crocodile kill on Juma. So why don't you go and see what it's up to?